<sighs> so, if I were to tell you to think of the most effective tone shaping tool that comes to mind for pretty much any guitar rig, what would it be? Hopefully you would have answered with the speaker because that's the right answer. But what if I told you that there was something that has just as much effect on your tone, if not more? What if I told you it was also much easier to implement, much more portable, and much less expensive than buying a brand new 4x12 speaker cap? Sounds pretty good, right? Well, unfortunately, that's a pipe dream, so keep dreaming, idiot. All right, bye. You know what this wall is missing? Just kidding. There is something that does all of those things that I just said, and today, I'm gonna share them with you. These are the PM EQ and the EQ 4H Pro from Master Effects. Let's do it. All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle. What I do is I take all sorts of awesome high gain, rec what, 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 what? I take all sorts of awesome high gain related guitar equipment, record it with a simple setup, and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. And one of the things that I like to focus on here on my channel, because it's something that I'm very passionate about is tone shaping. And pretty much ever since I started this channel, I get a lot of questions regarding how to shape your tone to get this sound or this sound. Or I get people in the comments that say, thank you for showing me how to dial in a particular amp because I had this amp and I never knew I could do that. That's just a skill that I have acquired over many years of just spending time with lots of different amplifiers and seeing how they work. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, if you're trying to really make a big difference in your tone, if you're unhappy with the tone that you have, the speaker is going to have the most effect on that tone. So shopping for the right speaker and the right speaker cabinet to pair with your amplifier is usually the route that you should go, but that's kind of difficult in a lot of people's cases because speaker cabinets are big, they're expensive, they're cumbersome, or if you already have a speaker cabinet, you can buy new speakers and swap them into your existing speaker cabinet, but chances are you're losing a lot of the value of buying brand new speakers and swapping them into a used speaker cabinet because that's not a mod that adds any value to the cabinet unless you upgrade the speakers, and even if you do, it just doesn't add much value. It doesn't really pencil out if you're buying these things new. And a lot of people don't have access to a good used gear market where they live. So finding a good deal on a two x 12 or a four x 12 that's good quality or has good speakers in it, all those things can be very, very difficult. So that's why I want to focus in on EQs today with you guys here on the channel, specifically parametric EQs. So one thing that I've touched on multiple times in my channel, and one thing that you guys are always dropping down below in the comments is the 10 band EQ and how much of a useful tool it is for shaping your tones. And that is absolutely 100% true. The 10 band EQ is a classic. It's a staple, especially in the metal guitar community for a reason, because it really affects the frequencies that you need the most control over on a guitar signal. They're also easy to understand because they tell you exactly what frequency that you are changing and they tell you by how much you are boosting or cutting it in decibels. So that's why when I usually recommend EQs to people, I recommend them the 10 band because if you don't have any experience with an EQ, this is a great place to start. But if you want to get more detailed, you wanna kinda dive in deeper, you wanna have more control over those frequencies that you are adjusting and really get down and dirty and kinda fine tune things, this is not gonna be what you want. And that's where these parametric EQs from Master Effects come in. So I actually reached out to Master Effects on my own accord and asked them to send me these two pedals. Master Effects is a great company and they make a lot of awesome products, especially for the metal community. They're bringing back all sorts of long gone EQs and uh, preamps and stuff like that in pedal format and making them easily accessible to you. So that's why I wanted to highlight their products on today's video. Now they did send these to me for free at my request so I could make this video, but I'm not being paid. You could consider it a sponsored video if you want. I wouldn't blame you. So feel free to take everything that I have to say with a grain of salt, but just know that I am kind of using these for demonstration purposes because they do what I need them to do in order to explain my point and they're really well-made products. So if you guys wanna check these out after the video, I will put links down below in the description for you to do that. Yes. All right, so what is a parametric EQ in relation to a graphic EQ. Well, a graphic EQ literally looks like a graph and you can just kind of bump the sliders up and down for each frequency depending on what you want to adjust. But with a parametric EQ, you get more control over that frequency, especially with something like the EQ4H Pro here. The EQ4H Pro is actually 
a recreation of the Furman PEQ4, I believe it is. I'm not super familiar with the history of these products because that's not really why I'm interested in them. But Lamb Chopper has great videos on both of these pedals if you guys really wanna dig into the history and why these were brought back or made. But the reason that I wanted to check out the EQ4H is because we get control over four different frequency ranges all of those ranges overlap as well. So if you wanna cut and boost some very similar frequencies that are close to each other, you can do that. But a parametric EQ essentially just gives you a really wide range of control over certain frequencies. On here, you can see we've got a top row, a middle row, and a bottom row of controls. On the top, uh, this is going to be our boost or our cut to the signal regarding that particular frequency range. So if we want more low end, we're gonna boost. If we want less low end, we're gonna dial it back and cut. And I've noticed right around noon seems to be about kind of unity where it's not really going to affect anything if you have these set at noon. So if you only want certain frequencies to be affected, you can set these at noon and they're not really gonna make a difference. But if I remember correctly from the website, each one of these EQ uh, ranges in the boost has up to 20 decibels of boost. So I mean, that's gonna go a long way and shaping your tones. On top of that, the middle control is a frequency. So this actually controls uh, what frequencies that you are going to be adjusting. As you can see here, each one of these rows of controls, it tells you what frequencies they affect. So for the bass control, for example, if we have it dialed lower, it's going to affect the lower frequencies starting at 20 Hertz. And if we dial it all the way up, it's going to affect up to the 400 Hertz frequency range. And the same goes for each one of these additional controls affecting the frequencies listed. And then finally down here, what's really, I think what's, you know, really important to these pedals, this is the bandwidth or the Q. If you've ever messed with a parametric EQ in say like a, a DAW or a digital audio workstation, uh, this is essentially going to adjust how much of the frequencies around the frequency you have selected are boosted. So if you want to think of like a graphic EQ uh, and say you're boosting hundred Hertz, well, if you have this bandwidth set all the way down, it's really only going to affect that 100 Hertz frequency. But if you dial the bandwidth up or dial the Q up, it's going to widen out the amount of frequencies that kind of get like swept up in what is being boosted here. So instead of just spiking your 100 Hertz, you're spiking everything from 50 to 150 Hertz when you have the bandwidth dialed up a little bit and it'll kind of be sloping down as you move away from that 100 Hertz on each side. Hopefully that makes sense. I do realize that it's kind of confusing and I'm not the greatest at explaining things. So if you guys have any further questions about how Q or bandwidth works on this pedal or on any parametric EQ, leave it down below in the comments and either I or one of the viewers of the channel, I'm sure will help you understand a little bit better. You're gonna need to spend some time with it to get familiar with it and to really fine tune it, but you're gonna be rewarded when you find the right settings. And then as for the PM EQ, this was actually modeled after the EQ that Metallica used on a couple of their earlier records. Obviously, Puppet Master EQ refers to Master of Puppets. And this was based off an Aphex 2 EQ, I believe. And it's essentially modeled after that EQ the way that it was set up for those records. So they were using the lows in order to boost the low end frequencies. They were using the mid frequencies in order to cut mid frequencies. And then they were using the high frequencies to shelve off certain high frequencies. And that is how this pedal has essentially been recreated. So it kind of puts those controls that you need from that Aphex 2 in your hand in an EQ pedal, as opposed to an expensive old piece of rack gear that you're gonna have a really hard time finding. These things completely transform the amp that I use them for in this video. And I think you guys are gonna see that and you're gonna be very surprised at how much range these have and how much control they're gonna give you over your tone. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's check these bad boys out. All right, guys, so I have both of the Master Effects EQ pedals hooked up in the loop of the Mesa Royal Atlantic 100. Now, I chose this amplifier because I found myself overall fairly disappointed with it. It actually reminds me a good bit of the Mesa Stiletto. Wouldn't you say? Sounds a lot like the Mesa Stiletto, huh? It's kind of honky, kind of ugly, don't sound so good. Poo poo doo doo tones. Oh, you're just gonna sit right there? Are you gonna sit right there while I do my video? Oh, am I boring you? Uh, it kind of suffers from the same like ugly, obnoxious mid voicing that the stiletto has. And it's also like kind of muddier. It has a little bit more bass response, 
but you also don't have a presence control. So anyways, there's a lot of features missing to shape the tone on this amplifier to get it to sound the way that I personally want it. We also have this amp going into an Engel E412XXL Pro with vintage 30 speakers, SM57 on the V30. I won't be touching any of the sounds in post processing and post production is what I meant to say. There will be no post processing. That's it. Those are the words. And yeah, I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, simple settings with these pedals. These are the tones that I was able to dial in, giving myself about 10 minutes to really kind of tweak them. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna play you the raw amplifier and then we will check out these EQs one by one. <laughs> All right, so that was just the amplifier. Here is the PMEQ engaged. All right, so massive difference right off the bat. You guys will be able to hear that difference night and day because that EQ is doing a lot right now. So as you can see on the controls, we are boosting the low end frequencies and we have that frequency curve fairly small. So we're kind of trying to focus it on just a few specific bass frequencies that are going to kind of enhance the percussiveness without making the amp sound overly bloated and fat. We are definitely scooping out some of the mids because again, this amp has, in my opinion, a really ugly mid voicing. So we have that mid cut engaged, taking out a bunch of those kind of like nasally mid frequencies. And then over here, we have the high frequency shelf set as so. The way that we have it dialed, it is still boosting our high end quite a bit. So one more time, and then we'll switch directly over to the EQ for hell. I think it's funny. <laughs> All right, PMEQ off, EQ for hell on. So as you can see with both of these EQ pedals, I went for similar things. With the EQ for hell, I kind of did uh, a similar bass boost, a similar high end boost. But I will say that the mids, I kind of shaped them a little bit differently. I did cut them, but not quite as much as I did with the PMEQ. And the way that I have the bandwidth set on each of these frequencies, we're not really boosting super wide ranges. And again, I was really trying to fine tune that and get it close to the PMEQ because I, I really like what the PMEQ is doing, but I was having a hard time really nailing down the same frequencies. But overall, I kind of think I liked the mids that I had set up on this pedal a little better because they're not so scoopy as they are on the PM EQ. But again, we can dial all that stuff between either pedal. Don't forget, we're gonna stick the EQ4H out front and kind of mess with it as a boost towards the end of the video as well. But yeah, I'm gonna cycle through, I'm gonna turn these off, I'm gonna go through them one by one, one more time. <laughs> So yeah, as you can hear, massive difference between both the pedals and the stock amp itself. If you really wanted to get crazy, you could use both these pedals in tandem and really kind of use them to go nuts and super fine tune the parameters if one of the pedals like the PMEQ does something that you like, but you need a little bit more functionality, you could definitely combine them uh, together at the same time and really just kind of have a crazy amount of control over the EQ of your amplifier. So if you're in a studio setting, I mean, these things are gonna really come in handy, especially if you can't quite get your guitar 
to do what you want it to do, either in the mix or just kind of laying down those tracks in general, these are definitely gonna do that for you. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna leave this in the EQ. We're gonna put this in front of the amplifier and I'm gonna set it up as a boost. All right guys, so I now have the EQ4H in front of the amp. We have it set up as you guys see it here on your screen. I am boosting the front end of the amp pretty hard. Uh, we are cutting as much low frequencies from this pedal as we really can at the moment. And then we are giving it a little bit of a uh, upper mid boost, actually a, a pretty significant upper mid boost that I think you're gonna be able to hear pretty easily. So using the pedals like this, again, just another way to get the flexibility out of the amplifier and just kind of completely transform it from a stock amp with no pedals. So here is the amplifier, no pedals. I'll kick in the EQ4H. So as you can see, it definitely really adds a bunch of saturation. Uh, it does tighten up the low end. It adds some upper mid grind. It definitely works as a boost really well, actually. It's a little underwhelming at the moment just because this amp is underwhelming, even with the pedal in front, but that's why this is gonna come in handy. Well, let's kick in the PMEQ. <laughs> Guys, so we turn this kind of, I, I don't know, just really plain and kind of ugly sounding Mesa Royal Atlantic 100, very nasally, not very percussive at all, into an absolute 80s thrash metal monster using these two pedals. Like the amount of transformation before and after is just kind of insane. It does not even sound anywhere near like the same amp. And that's just with me tweaking the EQ controls a little bit. So again, thanks to Master Effects for sending these pedals out at my request and allowing me to share these with you guys here on the channel. I will definitely link down below to the Master Effects website to where you can check out these and all of the other awesome offerings from Master Effects. If you guys like the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And most importantly, I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. What do you think about these pedals? Have you used the parametric EQ in your setup in any way, shape or form? If so, which ones? And can you see these pedals being a useful addition to your belligerent amateur rig. Drop them down in the comments and I will be sure to meet you down there to talk about it. Thanks so much for watching guys, Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. I don't know what this is. All right, bye. I'm gonna go. Oh, I'm still connected. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.